What's up guys, welcome to Mike It Yourself and today is Review Wednesday. For today's video, we're gonna take a look back at the Loring blocks, I guess, I forget what they are called. Adapters, whatever. The things that we use to lower the rear end of the 07 Road King. So, you'll notice the, uh, the King is looking pretty low to the ground right now. Um, just with its normal stance, right? So right now it's, it's on its kickstand, of course, uh, or the jiffy stand, I think is the correct terminology. Um, does anybody call, does anybody call that thing a jiffy stand? Does anybody go, oh, hang on, let me put my jiffy down. Uh, tell me, like, I don't I don't think I've ever heard that. Um, I always, I've always called it a kickstand, but to be honest, I have not always owned a Harley, so maybe it's a Harley thing and I'm just not aware, but um, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I need to do some homework. I got to find out where that Jiffy came from. Like, why would you call that? You say Jiffy and I'm thinking peanut butter. What do you want me to say? Anyhow, back to the show. So, I put these blocks on. And originally, I only went to the second hole, which was the two-inch drop. So, again, it has three holes. One, two, and three. That's one-inch, two-inch, three-inch drops. And since putting these on... Uh, I have moved to the three inch and uh, I've got to say, I, I don't have any problems with it. Um, I've seen some nasty videos. I seen one where like the piston uh, portion of the uh, shock was like bent. I don't know what that person was doing. Uh, maybe what they, it's possible, you know, because they did show like something similar to this, but I'm wondering if they kind of messed with this. Maybe they moved it forward. They put like too far of an angle on this and it totally tweaked their shock. Um, I don't have any weird stuff going on. It's been zero problems with that. I have gotten close a couple of times to on some kind of higher, uh, what do you call those speed bumps where I've just rubbed the belly on this thing, but nothing of concern. Now, part of that too is I'm kind of a bigger guy, uh, which just means there's more of me to love. Right? So anyhow, uh, I haven't had any problems though. And the issue, the thing I'm trying to resolve or solve for is just how well I sit on the bike because as I mentioned in that first video the Road King sits about two inches higher from the seat compared to my 17 Road Glide but I have to also keep in mind that the seat that I bought or that came with this bike is not the stock seat it's an aftermarket Mustang um, I, I'm not sure exactly which model it is it looks like the Road Sofa I think that's what they call it right the Road Sofa um, but the big seat, and I gotta tell you, I've ridden and ridden and ridden on this thing, and it's freaking comfortable, man. It's like the lazy boy of seats <laughs> for motorcycles. Super comfortable, but it's very wide, and because of that, kind of gives you like a bull-legged stance, which makes it hard to straddle, uh, just a little bit. But I'm gonna resolve that. Um, I want to keep this seat because I, I love it for the comfort of a longer ride. But for kind of cruising, especially coming up this spring when we start hitting the car show stuff every week, I want something that's a little bit more narrow, more low profile, that gives the bike an overall better look as we work towards that Cholo style look for this bike. Now, there was one modification that I did have to make to my saddlebags in order to accommodate those lowering blocks. If you remember, I talked about having to heat up the back side of the saddlebag to make this plastic um, flexible. So I believe this is just simple ABS plastic. So I took that heat gun, got this really nice and hot, and I used the end of a, of a jack, just the pole, right, um, to apply pressure. And what I did is I had outlined kind of where the shock was going to be, applied pressure there and started kind of rolling that thing in. It took a couple of rounds of it, um, you know, heating it up, pushing it in. I would use some cold water and a, and a rag uh, to cool it down, to get it to stay shaped and then test fit it. And I kind of went back and forth, back and forth to do it. Um, the, the second bag, I think this might've been the second bag. 
no, this was the first bag. The second bag went quicker just because I learned my lessons on this one. Um, you know, part of the challenge was trying to get that right angle. And then when I did this one, I started from the inside out and I found out that that was a mistake. Going from the outside in is the much better um, methodology because going this way in, I ended up like starting, I got like access. It's like a saddlebag skin tag, right? Um, kind of weird. Like, I don't know if I should freeze it and, and cut it off or what, but um, anyhow, I've got enough room now where the shock moves without rubbing it. You can see there's there's actually no rubbing or any like crazy shiny spots. So it works. Um, you're not supposed to have that problem if you have the hard bags. And I'm hoping in the future to, to go to hard bags because I want to do the stretch hard bag look. Again, just staying in, in tune with the, uh, the look I'm going for on this bike. So all in all, I think they're worth it. I want to say... These were actually pretty pretty low cost. God, I don't really remember. <laughs> Maybe 40 bucks or something like that. Um, you know, I, I probably will go air suspension in the future just because of how much I like the air suspension. As you know, I did it to my road glide and it had some challenges, but you know, we've figured things out and kind of back to that air ride. But uh, I think I'm gonna do it to this too. So we'll see. It is an improved ride, but these shocks aren't too bad, actually. When I compare them to the stock shocks that came with the Road Glide, these stock shocks, which are the stock Harley-Davidson Air shocks, um, they feel pretty darn good. Now, I haven't done um, anything crazy like Million Dollar Bogan goes, uh, so I wouldn't put these up against the Wilbers at you know any day of the week because I'm sure those are far better shocks, but these ones are pretty damn good. Um, I've got zero problems with them. So... One of the things I did want to point out after lowering it to the three inch hole, um, as I mentioned in the original video, I didn't have to change out the kickstand <clears throat> with the two inch drop. Technically, you don't have to change the kickstand with the three inch drop, but I will tell you that if your bars are turned to the right, um, not that it will fall over very easily, you got to actually pull it, but you can definitely feel that it's not as stable as it was before. Once it's on its, if you turn your bars the right way and get them turned off to the left, then it's sturdy, it ain't going nowhere. So if you're looking to do this and and because I am probably gonna go to an air suspension at some point, uh, I will go with the one inch shorter kickstand uh, at that time. So that is something I would recommend just again for, for sake of security. Um, when you look at this thing as it sits, you can see it's do my best to kind of lo level out this camera. It's not super leaned over or, or not leaned over as much as like your standard bike. So if I look at road glide, road glide is, is, is pretty leaned over compared Right, so that's just something to think about is if you're gonna do the third inch drop, then you might wanna consider getting that one inch shorter um, kickstand or jiffy, right? Um, yeah, so I hope this video helps you out. If you're kind of wondering whether or not you should do the blocks and you've been waiting to see what my review is on it, it's a thumbs up, good stuff. I lucked out on this one. So hopefully, uh, yeah, it helps you out. Well. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. If you like uh, the channel, become a subscriber and you know what to do with that little bell, right? And until that next video does post, I'll see you in the wind.